Do you remember what we did before Spring Break? Today, um, let me review. Let me review uh, what we did before. Okay. In chapter seven. Uh, first of all, I have to give you this picture again. Population. And uh, okay, let me let's put here population. And we got sample. Right, as many times. Yeah, please open the door. I will close later. Thank you. Uh, we had the uh, mu here, which was the population mean and sigma population standard deviation. And also we got the P, which was the population proportion, right? And the other one, we had the uh, X bar, which was a sample mean. And the uh, S sample standard deviation. And the uh, P hat sample proportion. Yeah, we got one by one. Yeah, one by one to estimate them. Because they are unknown parameters, unknown parameters. So uh, we have to use the statistics. We have to use the statistics. <laughs> Estimate unknown parameters in the population, right? Um, additionally, we got N, which was a sample size. You know, the statistics from the, uh, from the, Sample, so here is a sample, 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 sample. And the parameters in the population, so it's a population, 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 population. Yeah. So we can make the case. <clears throat> Remember, right? So uh, we estimated unknown population mean, unknown population proportion. So we discussed the two sections. We discussed the two sections. Uh, one was the from the sampling distribution for the sample mean. Sample mean. And the other one was for the proportion. Yep, let me copy the sampling distribution for, uh, let me take this one is later. Yeah, let me let me take this one is later. Um, let me take the left one. Yeah, even we discussed the sampling distribution for the sample mean in chapter six. In chapter six, uh, we got the sampling distribution for the sample mean, and we stated sample mean has normal distribution. You know, always the normal distribution has uh, two parts. The first one was the mean, which was the mu, and the second one, uh, the second one was the standard deviation in the normal distribution, which was the sigma over square root of n. Yeah, as I told you, in chapter six, in chapter six, yeah, we are in chapter seven. In chapter six, uh, we got the sampling distribution for the sample mean, and we assume we knew the mu 
and the sigma, right? Yeah. Even though now they are unknown, but in chapter six we assumed we knew the population A and the population standard deviation, right? Yeah. This but now chapter seven we are discussing estimation confidence interval for unknown population. So now chapter seven. Um, C percent. Do you remember the C confidence level? 90%, 95%, 90. You know, today I just made you review, remember, remind, yeah, what we did before the spring break. Yeah, please uh, review, remind one by one. C percent confidence interval for unknown population mean. Right? So it was the x bar plus and minus the z score times sigma over square root of n. Um, the c was the um, confidence level. It was a point estimate. The Z had a name, do you remember? Critical value. And this one was the standard deviation of the X ball. <clears throat> That's good, right? And the second part, the multiplication was just E, and it had another name, the margin of error. Can you remember that? Right? <clears throat> yeah, we want to estimate. We want to estimate unknown population mean in chapter 7. So we didn't know what is a mu. But we got this. It's two here. And the sample mean was the point estimate for unknown population mean. And we use the this word critical value that yeah, it was from here. <clears throat> Any question? Um so it, it was the topic section seven point one. I skipped seven point two. Today we are going to discuss the seven point two, but um, the proportion was in the section seven point three. Um, let me give you the confidence interval first. <clears throat> C percent confidence interval again, but it was for the proportion. It was P hat plus N minus the Z times square root of P hat Q hat over N. <clears throat> you remember? Again, yep. It was the confidence level. It was the point estimate, critical value, and it was the standard deviation. The second part, yep, yeah, it was the margin of error. So everything is the same. Yeah. But now the second topic in 7.3 was confidence interval or unknown population. Uh, right? Yeah. So the p hat was the point estimate, and we use the z score again for the critical value, and we got this. Remember, yeah, please remind yeah, the two confidence intervals. Hmm. Okay, now, who do you expect over there? C? 
Just a second. Please compare the left one and the right one, right? It was the sampling distribution for X ball. Right? Yeah. Who do you expect? You. Uh uh. Uh uh. The one that had the standard. P hat. P hat. Oh, come on, please. It is not too hard. What did I say? Sampling distribution for X ball. Who was there? Who was the, the first part? The first position? P hat. Yeah, just copy. Yeah. So we need the sampling distribution for the P hat. You know, I didn't. I didn't give you the sampling distribution for the P hat before, before the string break, right? But see, it started X ball again. X ball, X ball. How can you speak from who should be the first? P hat has, and I just copy, I just copy P hat has what? What do you expect? What kind of distribution? Oh, why not? The Z, normal, yeah? Who are the Z? Standard normal distribution. Yeah, normal distribution, yes. The normal distribution. And always it has the two parts, right? Yeah, okay. Who do you expect? Who do you expect first? Let me see. Here's a mu. Mu, right? Yeah. Here is the population proportion. Who should be? P. Population proportion. Unknown population proportion. And then the second part. The second part was the standard deviation. The standard deviation in the lower distribution for the P hat. The right hand side, right? Who do you expect? Who? Standard deviation for that? It is. But be careful. That's not the P hat, but just the P and Q. How well, come not the. Just a so it must be square root of just the P, Q over N. Please compare the left one and the right one. Yeah, let me split left one and the right one. Exactly same. Exactly. But the left one for the mean, right one for the proportion. That is only the difference. Here is a X ball, X ball, X ball. P hat, P hat, P hat. Mu, mu, what? P, P, Z, Z. It was from here. Ah, uh, you know, actually, it must be P and Q. But now we don't know what is the P, what is the Q. That is the reason why we need the confidence interval. Why need an explanation? Right? So it, it must be, they must be just P, just Q. But we don't know. How can I do? In statistics, estimated. P hat, Q hat. Right? So that is a little bit different, but you know, almost the same. It is almost the same. Right? So please compare the two topics left, left one for the mean, and the right one for the proportion. Exactly the same. Exactly. So simply I just summarize the two topics, the two sections, one for the mean, the other one for the proportion. And also I gave you the table for the critical value. You know, both of them use the Z score. So uh, we made a table. It's a critical value. Sorry, confidence level and the critical value, the Z score, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%
95%. Can you remember this table? 99%. So it was 1.645, 1.960, 2.5, 1.5, 2.5, 2.5. Can you remember them? Not only the uh, three, can I show you on the page? Yes, yes, please look at the left hand side. It's not only the three confidence level, but even we can take the z-score from the z table, 80%, 70%, even 92%, 93%. Any kind of um, confidence levels, we can take the z-score, critical value from the z table. Right, yeah, we plug the confidence level in the middle, but we need it, the left table. Right, yeah. right? I summarized this everything. So, section 7.1, estimating unknown population mean. Right, yeah, here it is. Point estimate minus the margin of error. And the point estimate sample mean plus is minus and plus make the interval estimation. And then, ah, this one. Yeah, additionally, we discussed how can we get the sample size. Right, we will modify something that sample size, remember? Right? And it is not an estimation, but um, it is the additional topic to get the uh, sample size and don't forget round up. So round up to get the integer value, the whole number for the sample size, round up always. And yeah, we step, we step 7.2. And where is the 7.3? Oh, did you print out the T table? Oh my God, no, come, on. come on, come on, please today, please today, today, not more, today, please print out the tea table and please bring the tea table Wednesday. Say again? No, no, it's a, it's a lecture note. Yes. How are we able to email to print out? That is a good question. You can go to the Blackboard, right? It's a Blackboard courses 2023 spring 01 and your section and go to the course resource, uh, sorry, the lecture notes. Here's the lecture notes. Please take chapter seven. It's a PDF file or Word file, it doesn't matter. Then on the page number eight, you can print out, download and print out. Yeah. Please bring the tea table Wednesday. Right. But but we skipped. Yeah. Today we are going to discuss the second section. And yes, here was. Yep. Here was the section seven point three estimating the proportion. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a P hat, Q hat, and the uh, margin of error. The margin of error. Ah, uh, yeah, here. Yeah. I didn't I didn't copy and paste it here what was the E, but I gave you the E, the D times square root of over so um, I just remind you, I just review um, the two sections. Yeah, two sections here. Yeah. And additionally, we discussed the sample size. Yeah, I didn't write here, but we discussed the sample size. Anything? Can you remember? Okay, good. So today, let me go to the second section. The second one here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please look at the title. 
we are going to estimate unknown population mean again. But when sigma is unknown, right? Uh, let me show you what was the title, section 7.1. Let me go to the first section. We estimated unknown population mean. But what were the assumptions? We assumed we knew it. That is the big difference. So let me go to the summary again. Look at this. Here's a population unknown population mean. So we estimated unknown population mean before the spring break. Unknown proportion. Yeah, we estimated in section 7.3. Before, still we assume we knew it. Again, in chapter 6, we assume we knew both of them. But in chapter 7, Section 7.1, we deleted the assumptions we knew. So we estimated, we made confidence interval, interval estimation for this one. Now today, we deleted, we delete sigma as well. So today, we don't know not only the population mean, but also the signal. You understand? What will be the topic today? Right? Yeah. So before, see? Before, it was the sampling distribution. We didn't know. It was unknown. So we made the confidence interval, the interval estimation, right? Using the point estimate. But still, we assume. We knew the sigma. So here's the sigma. Right? But what's the problem today? We don't know the sigma either. What can I do? We have to estimate it. See? Today, we don't know the population standardization either. We estimate unknown sigma. With what? Sample standardization. Very simple. If you don't know what is the mu, we can estimate the mu with the sample mean. Today, if you don't know the sigma, we can estimate it with the S, the sample, the standardization. Before, we didn't know the population proportion. We used the sample proportion. One by one, anything, right? Yeah. So today, let me go to the section 7.2. The title is estimating mu when sigma is unknown. OK, here. It's the same idea, right? It's a finding the confidence interval for the mu when, even when, Sigma is unknown. Look at this. Exactly the same. Exactly. X bar, point estimate, plus, plus, and minus E, the margin of error. Right? Yeah, it's the same thing. But the problem is in E, in the margin of error, here was sigma, right? But Today, we don't know the sigma. Yeah, replace with the S. Who was the S? Sample standardization. But the, another problem is, uh -oh. and here was the Z. The Z was a critical value from the DK, from the standard normal distribution. But today, with the S, we are going to use the T score. I suggested. Print out the T table, but we didn't write. But anyway, we got the T score from the T table. Before, we got the Z score from the Z table. But today, 
we are going to take the another score, t score from the t table. Yeah, I will show you later. Yeah. So it, it is the new e, the new margin of error, right? We replace with the s, and we are going to take the t score for the critical value. Uh, yeah, EF, yeah, the degree of freedom, yeah, I will explain to you what it is degree of freedom. So now I can summarize here, right? You know, before X bar plus N minus the Z times sigma over square root of N. But today, X bar plus N minus T times S over square root of N. So please be careful. They are changed. But still, it is the point estimate, critical value. Um, it has another name, but anyway, it's a, it's a standard, it kind of standard deviation. But now I have to say it is the standard error. because we named is another way. It was the standard deviation, but now it is a standard error and it is the margin of error again. Okay, it's good. Okay, let me show you the T-table. T -ta yes, yes, it is the T-table. Uh, we are going to get the critical value, the T score, from uh, students. You know, it's a capital S. It's not you, right? Yeah, it's a capital S student. I will explain to you. It's a capital S students, T distribution. Right here. Um, still, do you have a Z table? Yeah, please. Yeah, it's open your. Uh, yeah, let, let me show you. Um, let me. Uh, chapter six, you know, when you go to the lecture notes, yeah, here is a lecture notes, each chapter, right? When I go to chapter six, yep, chapter six is a normal distribution, it's a normal curve. Um, there, yeah, yeah, there is uh, um, the Z table. Yes. Yeah, it is the areas from the standard normal distribution. Remember the Z table? Mm -hmm. Where is where was the probability? Where was the probability? We got the probability from the middle of the decade. There are probabilities, right? And the first column and the top, there's a discourse. Remember, right? Uh, please look at the T table. In the middle, in the middle of the T table, do you think are they probabilities? No. Why not? It's look oh, thank you. It looks like a probability, right? But not only this one, 1 1.2, 1 1.5, 2.4, 4, 5, 12. Oh my god. Probability never ever bigger than one. Must be less than one. But see, they are not. In the middle of the T table, they are not probability. Then who are, who are they? Who do you think? <clears throat> they are, I told you, they are not probabilities. Then they are, but they are. Oh, come on, what's this? There are key scores. There are key scores, right? Yeah, remember, you know the Z table, T table? They are totally different. In the middle of the T table, there are key scores. You know, people work with the Z table in the middle, they were probabilities, right? Yeah. But there are key scores. Then, where is the probability? On the top. On the top. Right? Yeah. Um, 
you know, before a student asked me, oh, Dr. Long, what is a one tail, two tail? It, it doesn't matter. It's one tail, two tail, it doesn't matter, right? Don't look at that. We are going to use the one tail, two tail this later, chapter eight in the last chapter. Don't look at that. Today, please look at the C. Who was the C? Confidence. Confidence level. 90%. We can pick one of the T-scores, 95%. We pick one of the T-scores, 99%. We are going to pick one of the T-scores. Not only 90%, 95%, 99%, but also from the T-table, we take T-scores, we can take a critical value at 99.9%. 98%, 80%, 75%, even 50%. But unfortunately, I cannot give you the T-score 92%. It's not 97%. But from the Z-table, 92%, 92% in the middle, take the left hand, take the Z-score. Remember that, right? And um, even, even, um, even 70%, 70%, 15%, yeah, we can take the Z score. Any kind of confidence levels, any kind of, we just plug into the middle and we take the Z scores, negative, positive, any confidence level, we got a critical value. But unfortunately, from the T table, we take the T scores only at 50%, 75%, 80, 85, 90, 90, yeah, yeah. only there, we take the T-score. What does that mean? I do not ask you 72%. I do not ask you, it's a 92%, 97%. It's just one of them, right? Yeah. So we are going to make a confidence interval in this section with a T, with a S, only from the given confidence levels, right? Yeah. You understand? Okay. So a second. There are so many T-scores, right? There's so many T-scores. What did I say? We have to pick one of them, right? So depends on the confidence level, for example, it's 90%, then we have to go to the middle column here, 90%. And we pick one of them depends on DF. Do remember who was the DF? DF stands for the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom. Yeah, it is the description of the T distribution, right? Yeah. Um, before the degree of freedom, is, let me show you the shape of the distribution, shape of the T distribution. And at the beginning, here is the properties. Here is the properties for the F scale. It's a capital S student T distribution. The T distribution is symmetric with the mean equal zero. You know the T distribution was from the standard normal distribution. So please look at the picture. The purple one. The purple one is the standard normal distribution. And any kind of T distribution is a shorter because it has the thicker, it's a bigger table. So because of that, it's a smaller. Because the steel, the whole area is under the T curve, that is the 100% steel. So when I get more probability at the end, then in the middle, the height is a shorter. It's keep 100%. But the T distribution was from the standard normal distribution. So, bell shape, symmetrical, see, uh, it's bell shape, symmetrical, it's a mean equal zero, and it depends on the degree of freedom. I will explain to you what is the degree of freedom in a second. And yeah, see, entire curve, 100% of it. So because of that, in the middle, it's a short but it's a tail, it's a thick, it's a more common. Okay, now let me introduce to you the degree of freedom. 
the df, the degree of freedom, is n minus 1. Simply size, minus 1. Just a second. Have you ever seen n minus 1 before? Please go back to chapter 3. Classes. Say again? Uh, for the classes? Yeah, in this class. Okay. I remember in chapter 3, it might be late January and early February when we discussed the uh, six steps. I'm sorry, again. Yeah. Six steps to get the sample standard deviation. In chapter 3, we got S by the six steps in chapter 3. Right? Uh, let me see. Step number one, we take the sample mean. Step number two, we took the differences, square, and take the sum. You know, we have uh, another six steps in later, right? Random variable, but please go back to the first one. Yeah. And then divide it by what? Thank you, n minus one. Finally, take the square root of it. In chapter three, when we got S, the sample cell division, we divided by n minus 1. What did I say? I explain to you later. Later is true. Okay? n minus 1. You know, before I, I suggested minus 1 is nothing, divided by 99, divided by 100, there's no difference. That method, right? Divided by thousand or nine hundred and ninety-nine, oh, no difference, right? But it has the big meaning, right? Now n minus one. What is the name of it? The degree of freedom. Okay. Let me ask you. Give me any five numbers. Any five. It's any five. Oh, simple. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Can you give me any five? But you have to make average ten. Give me five. <laughs> give me. Oh, come on, please. Can you? Ten. 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 Okay, good. Yeah. He gave me 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Some will be 50 divided by 5, average will be 10. Yeah, you wanna try again? Yeah, oh, good, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 50. What is the idea? We make the sum 50 divided by 5, must be average, must be 10. Right? You wanna try? Yeah. Oh, come on, please. Anyhow, we make 50, right? Then the average will be 10. Good, right? Can you give me any other, any five, please? She gave me a very simple one, any five. Okay. Four, nine, eight, six, and three. And three. Can you give, can you give me again for five numbers? Uh, oh, come on! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kidding, never mind. See, there are just give me any five, right? So I, I understand, even I cannot remember what, what were your five numbers. Because she gave me, she gave me any five randomly. They are all free. They are all free. But they gave me 10, 10, 10, 10. Last one must be 10. Why? Because we have to make 50. Divided by 5 must be average, must be 10. And you gave me 20, 30. 0, 0. Last one must be 0. Right? What is your number? Did I ask you? No, okay. Can you give me any, any four numbers, please? Any four numbers? Any four numbers, please, any four. 
Oh my God, just so again. Uh, any four? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, up to ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. The sum is the thirty-four. If I want to make the average ten, the last one must be sixteen. You understand what I'm saying, right? Uh, she gave me randomly the three numbers. 7, 8, 9, 10. The sum is 34. When I make the average 10, then the last one must be 16. Because I have to make the sum 50. Guess what? So you always have to make it 50. The whole. It doesn't matter. If we want to make the 100, 20, 20, 20, 20, last one must, what did I say? Average if I want to make average 20, another B, 20, then 20, 20, 20, 20. And the last one must be 20. If I want to give you um, 10, 20, 30, 40. And uh, only the 100, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40. Already 100, then last one must be zero. You understand what I'm saying, right? So if I just ask you any five numbers, any 10 numbers, they are all free. But if I suggest to you, give me numbers, but you have to make a mean, a given mean. Then even four numbers, nine numbers are free. But the last one, is not free because we have to make the mean, the average. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? So the last one is not free. How many numbers are free? N minus one. Let me give you the definition of the degree of freedom. The definition of the degree of freedom is the degree of freedom. What a stupid definition, but it is true. Yeah. Somebody asked you, oh, do you know what is the meaning of the degree of freedom? Yes, I knew it. Degree of freedom is the degree of freedom. Yes, it is. Right? Why we have to, you know, uh, why we have to divide it by m minus 1? Because in step 1, we got the mean. In step 1, mean was given. Like as the 10. Like as the mean 20. Not all sample size free. Only n minus 1 will be free. The last one is not free. We have to take the special one to make the mean, right? So because of that, uh, we divide it by n minus 1. And uh, roughly, I suggested when I take the square, then I can delete. It's almost everything. The variance was, is kind of the average. Can you remember that? The variance, take the square, is kind of the average, the mean. But um, in statistics, to get the variance, to get the standard deviation, we must divide it by n minus 1. Mathematically, in the calculation, it's no difference. But it is very important. It has its own name, the degree of freedom. Okay? So the key distribution is the degree of freedom. Yeah, and the degree of freedom was from the uh, denominator in the standard deviation, n minus 1. And this is the shape of the normal distribution, uh, I'm sorry, the key distribution. Um, I want to explain to you is more about the um, key distribution. When we started, we started 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, okay, five minutes, okay. Um, let me Google, let me Google T distribution. Yeah, T distribution. Oh, Wikipedia, I love it. Yeah, here is the... 
Here is the shape of the tree distribution I told you. It looks like a standard normal distribution, bell shape, symmetrical, inequal zero, right? Because the tree distribution was from the standard normal distribution. Um, oh, yes. He suggested, he suggested the key distribution. Uh, he was born in 1876 in England, an English statistician, chemistry, uh oh. <laughs> Have you ever tried the Guinness? The beer. The beer. No. Can you drink? No. No? Uh, yeah, at least 21, okay. Anybody who tried the Guinness? Did you? Did you? Did you try? I'll try How old are you? Hush. Okay, good. Hush. You like it? Guinness? Uh, I think it's dark, isn't it? Uh, it's dark beer. Yeah. Yes. I don't like beer at all. I just like beer around. Do you like it? It's not my favorite. Oh, really? It's not my favorite. Uh, it is not your favorite. Oh, okay. I see. I hate it. Oh, well. <laughs> You like a real bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you don't, if you don't try, yeah, don't try, okay. Don't try. But just go to the, don't go to the liquor store, but it's Walmart, and please look at the Guinness bottle. Very black. Yeah. It is a very dark beer. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, it's too strong. Oh my God. Yeah. Just a second. What? What? What is dark? His position, his position was the head, head of the department, right? I think it's. And he majored in statistics and chemistry. How do you think? What was his job? Huh? It's enough fear. Enough fear? What do you mean, enough? I think it's better taste, right? What does that mean? It's better taste, genius. It's more, more disgusting, you know, it's, a, it's a more stronger. Right? Yeah, make stronger, make darker. Right? Yeah. So second, when I want to make the enough beer is a better taste, what I have to do for the better taste? Sweet it up, I don't know. We have to taste it. We have to try. Uh, yeah, we have to drink it, right? What a good job. Nine to five. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> Yeah, only morning, nine o'clock. Yeah, yesterday is a growing. Yeah, new recipe. Yeah, draw, drink, drink, drink. Another cup, another cup. What happens in the afternoon? Wrong, you know, right? You know, even they wanted, even he wanted to uh, get a good taste, right? Even, even if the bad, it, it, it was not better taste, but Drink, 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 what happened? It's better after a while. It's better, yeah, I feel better, happier, right? That was, his, just a second, just a second. That was his problem. Right? Yeah, yeah, maybe. See, you know, when we, before, when we discussed the sample size, what was the effect? More sample size, or is there? But unfortunately, I think he couldn't make the more sense, right? So, you know, at his period, yeah, it's only 19th century, that yeah, he had only the standard over distribution, but always something wrong. Because with the small sense, he needed another distribution. It was the key distribution, you know? And see, he published. He published a paper in 1907 about the key distribution, right? But he wanted to publish with his name. But he was one of the employee in Guinness. He couldn't. He couldn't publish his paper with his name. You know, most of the time, it, it belonged to the company, right? But he wanted. So because of that, he used the... Yeah. The paper name, the pen name, that was a capital S student. Because of the history, still we call the distribution in the student's key distribution. 
You know, the tea distribution is a very, yeah, it's an interesting history. So please, yeah, read um, his history. Um, today, yeah, it's dark. Today, yeah, it's no quiz. Yeah, I just want to review what we did before the spring break. And then you will be able to print out the tea table. Please bring the tea table Wednesday. And we are going to make the confidence interval Wednesday. But today, I will post a homework, the review homework from the 7.1 and 7.3, right? So no quiz, but please try the review homework. See you Wednesday. Thank you.